Hey everyone, Darkwell here, and welcome to another one of my Dota 2 hero guides. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Sniper. So Sniper is a pretty noob-friendly hero. He honestly, for a long time, has only been viable in the lower tier brackets because he was pretty one-dimensional, pretty straightforward, but also pretty effective if the enemy didn't really know what they were doing. And so for a long time, the main role of Sniper was just to allow noobs to <laughs> people that were new with Dota to get their feet wet, to learn positioning, to learn how to do damage and farm, all that kind of stuff. But actually recently, this hero has gotten some changes and some buffs that make him more viable in the pro scene or at least in high MMR pubs. And so he's actually getting picked a lot now in high MMR pubs. So that's why I'm remaking this video. I think I made a video about a year and a half ago that was still pretty relevant up until recently. Um, and so now I'm going to remake this. We're going to go over a lot of the things that have changed about Sniper and why he's now not just that noob-friendly, low MMR stomper like he used to be. So how do we think about Sniper in general? Well, first of all, he's pretty straightforward. He still does kind of the same thing that he's always done. And that is he sits in the back and he does insane physical damage. He just sits in long range. He's obviously a sniper, so he has a really long range gun. And he has the longest range in Dota. And just sits back there as a range hero, plunking away, you know, shooting his little uh, sniper rifle and killing people from distance. So obviously the counter to sniper is to jump on top of him because he's relatively slow. He's relatively squishy. So if you can initiate on him, if you can get on top of him, and if the sniper player himself has bad positioning, then it can be pretty easy to take the sniper out and then, you know, all their damage in the team fight is gone, or at least most of it. And so that's kind of the balance of sniper. And that's also why he's been a noob friendly hero for a long time is that it's all about positioning. But if you can get your positioning right, you can do a ton of damage in the game. But now they've actually given this hero a little bit of mobility, a little bit of laning prowess, and actually sometimes it's actually harder to jump on this hero and just kill him full to zero, where in the past if you jumped on him he was almost certainly dead unless he, his team helped him out. Now he has some resources, some tools to counter um, the jump. If you try to jump on him, he can sometimes get away, he might be able to just man fight you, which in the past he wasn't really able to do, he wanted to just sit back, but now he can kind of, if you know a carry jumps in, if a mid jumps in, Sometimes, especially if he has items on a good amount of farm, he can just sit there and stand his ground, which is something that he really wasn't able to do in the past. And so that's what we're mainly going to be taking a look at here in this uh, guide. Uh, like I said, I uh, made one in the past. Now we're going to be looking at it again, redoing kind of the, some of the stuff that has changed about the hero and what makes him different now, not just that one-dimensional hero like I talked about. And we're mainly going to be looking at the mid-roll and the carry roll. I'm probably going to be doing the laney stage for both mid and carry um, once we get into the actual gameplay portion. But then after the laning stage, the hero is kind of the same regardless, and then we'll kind of converge there together on that. But that's kind of how we're going to be looking at Sniper. So yeah, in general, pretty good hero, physical damage, always sits in the back, long range, still doesn't love to get jumped on, but now has some tools to counter that, um, at least to fight back, to man fight, those kinds of things. So that's how to think about Sniper in general. Now let's jump in and take a look at his abilities. So now that we understand Sniper in general, we can take a look at his abilities and see how he's able to be that long range physical damage dealer, but that also has some new tools to help him survive, to help him, you know, man up and fight people to the death, those kinds of things like I talked about. So let's just jump in and first we're going to take a look at Shrapnel. This is a pretty straightforward ability. You should probably know by now if you have any idea uh, what Dota is about what Shrapnel does. But basically you just click Shrapnel. Um, you can click the ability. It has a pretty long range here. You can see the AoE is huge um, that you can cast it in and and then you see this little blue marker here where you can sit it down in any of this in, in this range anywhere and basically you just kind of shoot these bullets into the air and then for a small duration a bunch of bullets rain down in a circle and do damage and slow so we can see um, I'll place it here over the axe and then uh, the axe is getting slowed he's taking some damage over time while he's in this circle and then if he runs out obviously he doesn't take damage and he's not slowed anymore and it's pretty straightforward and pretty simple that's just what shrapnel does now obviously you see here there's like a three and now it's at a one Basically, there are three charges that um, basically you can cast three at a time. So if we refresh here, I can cast three shrapnels all at the same time, and then it goes on full cooldown. Um, but basically, you can just have these three shrapnels for farming. You can have these three sh shrapnels to um, chase people down, all of that kind of stuff. Keep in mind, though, that the shrapnels do not stack. So basically, you don't really want to place them all on top of each other because you're just wasting them. So any... Uh, like coverage with those two circles, any place that those two circles overlap is just kind of wasted space. So you never really want to do that with the shrapnel. So that is one thing to keep in mind about this ability. And obviously all of the, um, all of the, 
the charges obviously have their separate cooldowns and then they generate back up. But you're basically going to be mainly using this ability to either chase people down, do some damage in fights. It also gives you vision for scouting, which is important, but it's mainly a farming tool. So you're going to be pushing out waves with it, whether it's in the laning stage or later in the game. You can kind of, because it has such a long range, you can kind of walk up. Like you can see how the, big the range is. You can walk pretty close, not even that close to the, the wave here. And then I can just cast it and then I can just walk away. And obviously I'm not going to be getting the experience for that, but I am going to be getting a good amount of last hits from just casting a shrapnel and I have three of them so I can clear waves really well with this hero by just not even approaching the wave but just kind of going up in fog in the trees casting my shrapnel and pushing the wave out with that so that's shrapnel that's how you use it in general to farm um, and you obviously want to chase people down with it don't overlap those kinds of things so that's shrapnel Next, we're going to look at Headshot. So Headshot is pretty straightforward. It's a passive ability, and what it does is just gives your auto attacks a 40% chance to do extra damage and kind of do this little, like, mini stun knockback thing. It's not a stun. It's like a slow, technically, but it really is, like, effective, and it kind of puts them in place. Um, so I'll just basically have Axe run at me here while I shoot him. Oh, shoot. Axe went out of... <laughs> he went out of vision. He went in the trees. Um, here, I'll just shoot him real quick. So basically, it should happen here. Axe is running... I'm getting no procs. There was a proc really quick. There's another proc. So you can see it like makes them dizzy a little bit. It's like a headshot. It makes them dizzy, like slows movement speed, does extra damage. And that's really all it does. It's pretty straightforward, actually. Um, it just makes this hero a little bit more annoying in lane to get last hits to harass in lane and then just later in the game i mean 110 damage per shot and that small little slow and that knockback is really really effective to just amp up your uh your damage output but then that is actually used in combination with take aim so really what take aim does the e ability is this just gives you bonus range that's really the most basic thing that it does and that's what it did just in short for most of sniper's history is that's all it really did just gave you extra range that's why this hero has such long attack range so we can see i can shoot this guy from all the way over here that's super far away um and then obviously if you buy dragon lance like you have even further to shoot the axe which is you can see this is like insanely far that's like basically blink dagger range um so I'll refresh here so the axe doesn't die. But now the other thing that Take Aim does is that recently it was introduced that once you activate Take Aim, it's like an activatable ability that you can actually use, is it makes um, you move pretty slow. So actually, I'll activate it here, and then I'm moving like really slow. It decreases my move speed, so it's hard for me to escape. But the thing that I get instead of move speed is I get permanent headshot for the full duration. So we'll refresh here. Uh, we can, so we can see, obviously, I'm shooting axe. I'm not getting headshots all the time. But then all of a sudden, I just click Take Aim. And there we go. Every single shot is getting a headshot every single time for that. Sh now, it's a pretty short duration, obviously. It's only three seconds, but that is extremely effective for multiple reasons, because obviously, if you are in the laning stage and you're in relatively close range to somebody in the lane in mid or whatever, and you just activate take aim, it's so hard for people to man fight you. They like pretty much can't because they're getting moved slowed. They're getting knocked back. Um, they're taking extra damage. During take aim, it's a very, very hard for enemies to fight into you unless they have, like, it's later in the game, they have a lot of items and things like that. So that just makes this hero really good in lane, but also later on in the game, it makes him way more powerful, dishing out damage in a more consistent manner and also being able to man fight people. That's one of the biggest things that they added to the hero that allows him to just be way more dynamic. It's pretty simple, but it just gives this hero way more breadth of ways to deal with things that in the past made him um just he would just die but now you know let's say you have take aim and you like buy a satanic later like you can just man fight like people just jump in you just activate um take aim you activate your satanic and like there's just you just can't die it's kind of insane how that works um so that's take aim those that's headshot that's how they work in tandem and then lastly his ultimate is assassinate this is a pretty straightforward ultimate it's not really something that people focus on with the hero it's kind of just like a weird one-off thing basically from very far range you can see let's just highlight it really quick let's see how far the range is like you can see look at the green uh circle way out here when i highlight it so it's really really far if you have vision of the hero you can um click on an enemy hero and it kind of loads like a big bullet and after a short duration um, of channel time you fire the bullet and it does a significant amount of damage so this is used for like finishing people off at super far range so people just get out of range you can't click them anymore with your right clicks but they have just low health they're just barely escaping you can assassinate them you know they get killed or in the laning stage maybe you hit six you can honestly just use this 
kind of off cooldown. Now, it does have a high mana cost, but you can use it off cooldown for a significant amount of damage. You can see um, the damage is, especially at level 3, obviously you're not going to have that in the laning stage, but at level 3, that's a significant amount of damage. So, you can use this in a fight. Now, obviously, later when you have items, you're not going to want to take the time to channel this. It's going to be more effective to right-click, but it just has its uses. There's also a stun, like a mini stun, so it, it can be used to cancel TP. So, if somebody tries to TP out in your face, as soon as they TP, you can click um, assassinate on the enemy, and then it will cancel their TP once it um, hits them. So, just keep that in mind that's an important thing to note about the ability as well so that's assassinate it's just kind of this extra thing that he has it's not like a huge deal honestly it's the thing that the hero does more is just click people that's really from long range that's really what the hero does in general and then the last thing i'm going to talk to you about take a look at is the shard i'm not really going to talk about the ags it just kind of like buffs up for right now it buffs up the alt and it's not a huge deal you're not really going to be buying it that often maybe like as a eighth item or something after you get moon shard, shard and all this stuff it's more of like a support build but it, it still is effective eventually but really what i'm going to talk to you about now is the shard which is concussive grenade and this is the other thing that allows this hero not to just be this like you know bot that you sit in the back and just click people with is that he gives um this concussive grenade gives him like escapability and some extra uh, ways to deal with heroes that jump on him. So what you do is you can just fire it out in an AoE. It's a little grenade that comes out, so I'll press D. And basically, I fire it in um, an area, and then it pushes every hero back, um, the enemy and myself, back in the direction um, from where it was centered. So you can see I put it here, the axe went kind of away from the center there, and I went away. So it's a good way to get distance between yourself and the enemy. So I'll just show you again real quick. So the axe obviously jumps in on me. He's trying to attack me well then i can just click this uh grenade right between us and then boom now we're farther away he's slowed he's also disarmed which is really important too so he's not like it's even if it's a range here and he's relatively close you can kind of you know click this uh grenade in a pretty pretty decent range and then you disarm them too so it's not like they can actually hit you and you can see how far you can actually make your, like, even if they're running at you and they're not right on top of you you can get some pretty good distance between yourself and the enemy with this grenade here so like I said, that just offers a little bit of extra control, a little bit of extra escapability, mobility, these kinds of things to the hero to allow him to deal with getting initiated on, and he's not just this one-dimensional hero. So now you have this take-aim activation that you can use, and you have this concussive grenade um, that you can use when people jump on you. And this makes Sniper much, much better. Just these two things alone just changes the dynamic of the hero. Even though he does the same thing, he's much more viable now. He actually has some skill involved, he, like he has a way more options, and it's a lot harder to deal with him in general. So that is Sniper. Those are his abilities. Now let's jump in and take a look at how he's played in a game. So now we're jumping into a replay here of Arteezy playing mid sniper, and he actually got first blood, but I'm not really going to show you too much of that, because that's not really reliant on you, all he did was just sit there and click the guy. <laughs> but uh, basically you'll notice that level 1 he takes headshot, so this is very important, because in the past a lot of times you may have wanted to take, you know, shrapnel level 1, you may have wanted to max shrapnel in general, because obviously you can push the wave with that, and then you were able to farm the small camp over here when there was small camps um, in the previous patches, but now because those mid lane small camps are gone, that pretty much removes your ability to just like spam farm with that max shrapnel. So the only time you're ever going to want to max shrapnel on this hero is if you're potentially playing it carry in the side lane so that you want to push out the wave eventually, you know, once it gets to six minutes or so, you push the wave out, you go farm the jungle camps, that kind of stuff. In that case, you would want to max shrapnel, although there are cases where you want to be aggressive, just like in mid lane. So when you're playing mid sniper now, you're pretty much forced to go into this um, headshot and take aim build, which is very, very effective because it allows you to do so much damage. When um, enemy melee hero that you're laning against like walks up to the creeps, you just activate take aim and you just headshot them every single time um, for that sh short duration. And you can see how effective it is at zoning out this pudge. Like this pudge just cannot walk up to the creeps because if he does, you know, uh, Arteezy is just going to activate his take aim, just do a ton of damage to the Pudge, and he's really just not going to be able to trade well. Um, and this is also true of even ranged heroes, because eventually, once you put more points into take aim and into headshot, not only are you doing more damage with headshot, but now you have even more range, so you're going to outrange a lot of ranged heroes, so even they have a hard time approaching the wave as well. And this is just the main um, strategy of playing Sniper in the laning stage, and he actually has become a lane dominating hero. It can be very very annoying to play against the sniper who knows what he's doing in the laning stage because of uh, this max headshot maxing take aim build. Um, so that's honestly, that's it. That's sniper. That's sniper in the laning stage. You just max these abilities, harass people, get your last hits. Pretty straightforward. So I fast forwarded to about eight minutes here and 
pretty much what you're going to want to do as sniper in the laning stage, like later portion of the laning stage, is you're going to want to try to push the tower, defend your tower, um, and be aggressive if you can. And obviously, in this higher MMR game, the uh, his allies are playing around him. But you obviously can push the wave still with your headshot. You can, it's not as easy with shrapnel, but you're pretty good at doing a lot of damage. But you are now kind of not just this weird like farming here. You can actually get super aggressive. So you can see he gets a haste rune, which obviously is really good for the hero because the main weakness of the hero is how slow he is. But you can actually gank with runes now as a sniper because yes your mobility is low so you're not a storm spirit you're not any kind of like high mobility spirit hero what you are though is an insane damage dealer early on so you can easily counter gank you know if the enemy is diving your tier one in a side lane you can easily tp in turn the fight you can also uh make sure you to to secure runes like that haste rune double damage something like that and go gank the side lanes as long as you're not walking directly into vision you're going to be very very effective at ganking you can see how much damage he's doing early on in the game like there's just nothing the enemy can do. They just cannot man fight the sniper because of this build. You're just ignoring shrapnel. You're not taking shrapnel. And you're just doing ridiculous right click damage. You obviously activate take aim and they just die. Like the pudge just dies full to zero. It's absolutely ridiculous. So this is how you want to be thinking about sniper. He's no longer just this like AFK farm hero. He's actually fairly aggressive. You can push the tower in. Um, you can get kills, you can counter gank, all that kind of stuff. Obviously, like I said, he has low mobility, but that still doesn't limit the hero because he just does more damage in the early game than like any other hero in the game. So I actually fast forwarded to when he is dead now at about 14 minutes because they actually dove like tier two down here. They like dove down here um, and they like all died. But I just wanted to show you this part of the game because this is how you need to think about Sniper. I know I already sort of commented on it at the late laning stage, but watch what he does. Him and the uh, Shadow Shaman, as soon as they respawn, he TPs aggressively. They immediately smoke up, and he just runs at the enemy. You can also see up here in the upper left, he's 12, 3, and 4. So he has died a few times, but he's been super active. He's, like, involved in, like, almost all the kills, like, half the kills, over half the kills. Because this is how you want to be thinking about Sniper. You don't just want to be this AFK hero. You need, throughout, basically, the entire mid-game to just constantly be fighting with your team. You are now a fight hero, because you're not maxing your farm spell. You're maxing your fight spells, and you do insane damage, like I talked about. So... I don't want you just sitting in the back. Like, obviously, you can push a lane. You can push a tower. You can defend a lane. Um, once you get a point in Shrapnel, you know, you can still use that effectively. But you need to be playing with your aggressive heroes, with your off lane, with your supports to get ganks, to play aggressively on the map and kill people because you're just so, so powerful. So, obviously, it's best if you can pick it with heroes like a... Um, like a... Shadow Shaman with the stuns, like a Nature's Prophet that can go in, like a Primal Beast that likes to charge in. You know, it's really good with heroes that like to go in, obviously, because you don't want to be frontlining on the heroes. So that's obviously very important. But, like I said, throughout the... Basically, once the landing stage ends, from like 8 minutes to probably 20-25 minutes, you're going to be running around with whatever aggressive cores are on your team and doing a ton of damage. You're not just the sit-back-and-farm hero like maybe you used to be in the past. So I jumped into a different replay now because the last game was such a stomp and ended in 24 minutes because he was doing so well. And I wanted to show you one late game fight. So watch what happens in this fight. The fight starts, he sits in the trees, he uses a couple shrapnels, but he's not clicking. He's not just like clicking away. And that's because he's basically waiting for the enemy to use all their spells. They used every single spell, including snowball, that could possibly get aggressive on him. Blink, waveform, snowball, arena, all used. And that's when he chooses to basically you know, counter-initiate, turn on the fight, just start clicking people down. And that's extremely important because a lot of people are tempted, you know, to, they want to sit in the back. Everyone knows sit in the back is sniper, right? Don't get initiated on. But a lot of people, you know, they'll sit in the back, but then as soon as their team initiates or something happens, they start clicking. That's not always the best idea because sometimes... Um, you need to just kind of wait till all the spells, or at least all the heroes are showing, so that you know where everyone is. You need to be very aware of what's going on in the game and where all the heroes are, because if people, you know, if the enemy's not completely terrible, they'll know there's a sniper in the game, we need to deal with the sniper, and the way that they do that is by jumping you. So there might be a hero that, you know, whatever heroes have jump, and in this game it's a lot. I mean, obviously there's Snowball, there's Arena with the Blink, there's Waveform, there's, uh... Queen of Pain Blink. There's all these things that can jump on Sniper, so he just kind of waits it out, waits for all of those spells to be cast, be on cooldown, and then immediately that's when he turns to fight, because you can do so much damage in such small amount of time that as long as you're not getting, you know, stunned, stun locked, initiated on, all of that kind of stuff, you will be able to do insane damage in the fight. So I think that's just a perfect example of how to play team fights later in, on in the game as Sniper, is you obviously want to sit in the back, but sometimes you can just kind of bide your time. Obviously, you want to be doing damage if you can. If the enemy's, you know, initiation is all used up, certainly, you know, don't just sit there and do nothing. But if there are still 
abilities or enemies that are able to jump on you and kill you, you still need to be wary and you just kind of need to be very uh, conscious of what's going on in the fight, what kills you, what happens, and that's basically how to be really, really effective at Sniper later on in the game and dish out a ton of damage without feeding. So... That is my sniper guide. That's kind of the updated guide for sniper in the past. The main difference was that he was just a farming hero. He just sat in the back, just clicked people, and farmed all game. Now, you can be extremely aggressive with this hero, do tons of damage early game. You can kind of be this weird, like, slow, immobile ganker that does a ton of damage, that fights with your team as long as they have initiation. And then later on in the game, you kind of still become that really high damage output carry um, from the mid lane or from the carry position as sniper so that is my sniper guide i hope that helps everybody understand how to play sniper in this new meta with these, these new abilities and as always guys like comment subscribe all of those kinds of things if you like the video and want to see more want to support me you can go to patreon to support me or sign up for coaching there i also offer coaching and if you haven't already join the discord we have a good community there as well so as always guys thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video